It's been a long time, but back... Well, for the first time in this studio, but back on the podcast, somebody that I've been wanting to talk to for quite a while, the legend, Mm. Homicide is here. What's going on, man? Yo, thank you so much. It's about time, man. I can't believe this phenomenal place you got right here. Like, I'm loving this Bruiser Brody toy right now. Like, I think he's getting kicked in my eye. I'm loving this. Man, that's that's my favorite thing. You walked in here and like you've been mm-hmm. you've been wrestling. Yes. Since what 90 94, March 5th, 1994. 1994, you have your first match. It's yeah. 2021, about to be 2022, mm-hmm. and you walk in here. And you're still marveling yeah. at all the wrestling stuff. Like you still yeah. have wrestling just running through you. It's kind of amazing. I do. It's, it's, I'm very passionate. I just love professional wrestling. I love the United States, Canada, Japan. It's everywhere. I, I love it. You know, people see me like I'm weird. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I love it. You're just a fan. I'm like, a big fan. And have you been a fan this entire time, or was there any? Was there a point that you got jaded? to it um i'm one of those guys that never forget where you came from um i'm always a fan i'm still a fan you know like i met terry funk like so many times and i feel like it's the first time i met him like i can't believe i'm talking to terry funk he's my <laughs> idol like wow you know um i consider Savio vega one of my uncles of wrestling and i work with him for major league wrestling and and he booked me for puerto rico and i'm like wow Savio vega tnt you know he's i can't believe this you know yeah. Um, same thing with Diva Dully, one of my uncles of professional wrestling. I'm, he calls me, and sometimes I'm like, man, he's Brooklyn. There, yeah, thank you for making us proud, man. But wow, Diva Dully, you know, I'm so happy. Same thing with Bubba. Bubba to me is one of my my mentors when it comes to business. I like the way he talks. Um, he just don't mess around. I, li- I like stuff like that. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. I don't care what anybody say. You know, I'm yeah. still a fan. I love that because you find. So many people that start to either believe their own hype yeah. or they, they kind of lose track on why they got in to begin with, which was you're a fan mm-hmm. and you just want to be a part of that world. Like the fact that, you know, you're still sitting there going like, no, I'm here. Like the guy that I was watching that made me want to do this, and made me want to do that. Yes. Like the fact that they're talking to me now, it's still exciting. Yeah. To my teacher is Manny Fernandez, the original book, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I Man, I'm very blessed that he told me a lot of things. And sometimes I feel like, wow, Manny Fernandez told me how to wrestle. You know, he told me the footwork, the psychology. Like, I feel like the slick Rick of pro wrestling, you know. So, man, I feel blessed. I feel good, you know. But, uh, of course, when I get into my little professional, you know, I'm I'm homicide, you know. I don't like that. But... And under low, man, I'm like, I don't bother <laughs> nobody, don't get me wrong, you know. I'm not one of those crazy fans who stalks you or whatever. I'm not, but, but I'm, I don't think I'm anybody's here. ever accused you of that. Nah, nah, but just in case, like, oh, this guy is, like, crazy. Well, I'm a little crazy, but not that crazy. Right, right. You're not, you're not crazy like that. Nah. I mean, you know, you're crazy enough no. to call yourself homicide, and yeah. people are like, yeah, he believes it. Yeah, exactly. Even though that it was, like, kind of a joke, and it, it, it was maybe a moment for two days, and then became for 27 years. It was crazy. So when did you, okay, so, like, well, first of all, when did you become like a like a student of the game? Because we all start, even when we're mm-hmm. fans as kids, like we were talking just a minute ago, I was the same as you. Like you find WWE on TV, mm-hmm. you start watching that, and eventually, like for me, it was finding like a magazine. Yes. And I'd see these pictures, these guys that were all bloody, mm-hmm. and I didn't know who they were, but they looked so cool, and you start finding out who they are because, you know, we didn't grow up with the internet. Yes. Um, the fact that you just bring up Savio Vega's TNT as well. Like mm-hmm. when when did you start to take on that extra level that wasn't just like, oh, cool, WWE is on TV. Yeah, well, at first, you know, I was in Puerto Rico and I saw Calito Colon, Carlos Colon versus the Adul the Butcher. Mm-hmm. Massive brawling, blood everywhere. I'm like, what is this? I was like about five years old. And I was so scared of Adul the Butcher. Like, to me, it was like Freddy Krueger. I didn't want to go to sleep, you know, because <laughs> I get nightmares for Mabby. Yeah. But um, after that, I went to Brooklyn, New York. I was born and raised there. And I was watching uh, a VHS video. It was uh, the Dream Team, uh, Brood Eye, and um, Greg, uh, Greg Valentine versus uh, the British Bulldogs. Yes. And after that, I was like, what is this? I fell a lot more in love with it. After I was watching the Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate War, the King Kombadi, you know, the Bruno San Martino, Pedro Morales, this list going on and on. Then one day, my mother took me to uh, a baddie or uh, the hood. 
a VHS, and it was like some kind of a, a tape. I saw I got a makeup with a cage or a sting, and I, 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 I grabbed this tape, and it said Halloween Havoc. And for some reason, I'm like I said, I got issues. You know, I love Halloween when I was six. I, kids are scared of Halloween, not me. Like, even though I was scared of doing the butcher, but I was, like, very, very excited about Halloween. Halloween was, like, my Christmas. Yeah. You know, so it was Halloween Havoc 1989, a, a match called Dunk Dome Cage Match. It was electrified and everything. It was Terry Funk, Green Buddha versus Ric Flair. And I hated Ric Flair. <laughs> and I hated it as a fan, you know, because to me, he reminded me of one of those spoiled rich guys. Like, yes. I, I'm I'm poor. And he's like, yeah, I'm rich. You know, my shoe costs more than... I hate the Ric Flair. And then Ric Flair and Sting. And I love Sting. At the time, I was like, Sting, Hulk Hogan, they hang out together. They're from Venice Beach, <laughs> California. Like, this is so cool, you know? Like, I gotta go to Venice Beach. Yeah, I gotta cool go. Guy. Like, I don't even know what California is at the time. And it was hot summer, but it was kind of cool there. Terry Funk from Texas. And to me, it was like, oh, he's one of those um, those, those cowboys, you know, John Wayne Murdoch kind of guys, you know? Like, okay, then, of course, Ric Flair. But when I saw Terry Funk being the crab Ric Flair, I was, boom, I fell in love. Then I saw a little promo of what Ric Flair did. There was a, a match with Steamboat, Rick Steamboat, and Ric Flair, and Terry Funk was the judge. Terry Funk came to the ring. Ric Flair won the belt, and Terry Funk came to the ring and said, hey, um... Rick, I want to be a first contender shot for the NWA world title. Rick Flair with a cocky attitude. No, no, no. You go back to Hollywood with Stephen Stallone. You want to be the contender? You be on the top of the chain? You never going to wrestle? He was cocky, conceited. I was like, oh, but this guy, Rick Flair, you know, he was like, I'm so sorry, Rick. Let me shake hands. I apologize. <laughs> I was joking. He comes to the left. Bam. Boom. And beat up Rick Flair. And boom. I want to become a professional wrestler. Because of Terry. Yes, because Terry Funk. Because Terry Funk was the guy. You were like, I need to find the job where I can punch people like Ric Flair in the face. Exactly. And to me, Terry represents the poor people like me. Yeah. And I want to punch all the rich guys. Yeah. You know, all those guys, though. Those greedy people who don't care about the poor, you know. And to me, that's where it felt like, okay, I like Terry Funk. Me, I, I was not into, like... Pedro Morales or anybody, Carlito Colon from Puerto Rico, me, Macara from Mexico. I was, I was into some white boy from Texas. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I mean, at the time, it wasn't like there wasn't a guy from Brooklyn out there no, that was, was like representing what your life looked like. That was the closest you were coming, yeah. ironically. Cowboy Terry Funk was as close yeah, to you I, as you I, could find. Our cowboy picky represent the poor. You yes. Know, the, to me, represent us. You yes. know what I mean? So I kind of like, I kind of dig that, you know? Yeah. That got all this fun. I'm like, okay, I, I see what's going on here. Yeah. I feel like with TNT, Savio Vega, you know, kind of Cologne, you know, the Till Santana. I love Till Santana. Yeah. I think he's a phenomenal wrestler, no matter what, what people say about him. He should be world champion, but that's another story. But yeah, man, Terry Funk, after that, I heard about the West Texas University, all the guys that came from the, the Dusty Rose, the Bruiser Brody, the Tolly Blanchard, Manny Fernandez, and he's the one just took me and trained me, and he told me stories like, yeah, that's part of my clique. Like, what? And he told me great stories, like, my boggling, you know? Man, that's so cool, though, that you're like this little kid. Watching Terry Funk and he yeah. wants to and he wants you to wrestle and then like later in life yeah and you're I, like on shows with him and you're like this is and I wrestled him like <laughs> about twenty years ago and I was in Japan I was so nervous and you know when you nervous you might mess up yeah me it was the other way around I was nervous that I'm gonna beat him up and I'm like oh man I'm gonna get in trouble yeah so I came back for Japan for Big Japan Pro Wrestling it was Jojo Pro I wrestled him and. Yeah, I kicked his butt, but he still remembered me. Even though he jokes around like, oh, this little Mexican potato bean, you know, <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, he's a, uh, man, he's a brilliant, brilliant man. This guy deserves a statue um, somewhere in the United States, in Texas, like yeah. a Miami or something, man. He he is wrestling. That guy is wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's incredible, Terry Funk. Unbelievable. And, and especially because when you look at, like, the levels of his career and mm -hmm. how many different phases he kind of went through and every single thing that he did it was just like 
he was the man. Yeah, you know what I mean. He made it work every single time. Absolutely, and I'm trying to like also still learning like what he did for for help the guys, the young guys. That's yeah. what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm 44. I feel like I'm 54 in dog years. You know, so I'm doing <laughs> my thing. I'm I'm helping the the new generation. You know, and you know sometimes they they get smacked back in the head because they're going too fast or maybe it's wrong. You gotta work smart, but it's an excellent chance right now what I'm going through. But did you find, did you feel like when you were younger that there were people in the style that you were working at the time that there were people around you being like you got to slow down you got to slow down and Absolutely I mean isn't not. it a cycle I actually the, the funny thing is that I hated my style like you I did. Wa- I like I wanted to become a WWF wrestler WWF WWF and uh, at the time um Vic Man won big guys I'm a small guy. I'm 5 eight, you know right. 200 pounds there was no cruiserweight at the time those massive King Kong Mudders Hulk Kong Go to Moy there was those guys and I'm saying to myself I'm never going to make it to the WWF because my goal is massive square guard mm-hmm. I want to be there, you know, and it's not gonna happen. Suddenly, my faith was my passion was going down. Suddenly, 1995, my friend was telling me, You gotta see this promotion from Philadelphia, let's call it Cream Championship Wrestling. And I'm like, What is that? I don't know. I know Paul E. Dangerously, and I remember Paul E. was managing the Samoans, yeah, and the yeah, small yeah. SWAT team. Yeah, I'm like, Oh, I gotta see this thing. The first man that I saw in ECW was Sabu. And boom, I was like, oh, my God, what is this? Oh, I, my. I need to do this. And that, that's so amazing, though. So, like, you're sitting there, you become this ECW fan, and this person is, like, watching it going, like, yeah, this is yeah. this is where I belong. This is my style. Mm-hmm. And then, it, what, like, maybe a year after you're watching, yes. who joins ECW? Terry Funk. Terry Funk. Has, it's he wild. Ba- he made ECW. Yeah. And the first part I saw was Sabu. And I saw Pug Enemy. And I'm saying, like, man, I could do better than this because they had this hoodlum character, you know, from the streets, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I'm a street guy. I still am, you know. And um, my my boy was telling me, you got to change your character, you know, because at the time they call myself Latin Terror. I was a bootleg Undertaker and Sting. It was <laughs> so bad. Very bad, you know. Very bad. So my boy was like, be yourself. Oh, what you mean, be myself? I'm like... The stuff you do in the streets, you know, like be yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna call my house like MC Hammer or something <laughs> like that. So I was watching Cops, the yeah. TV show in Fox, yeah. and somebody was on the run for homicide. I'm like, yeah, right. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that name homicide on a family entertainment. Pump. No, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna give is, it two days. What year was this again? 1994. Oh my God! So this is like as family friendly as yes. anything has ever yes. been. Homicide. Yeah. There's no wrestler named Homicide. Done. And it became 27 years. I got used to it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. I had this uh, a hip hop shirt. I cut my hair bald because my boy uh, cut my hair very wrong. I wanted a Caesar, <laughs> and I said, "Just chop it off." So I don't, dog, I got a balding right now for years. I got used to it, you know. Yeah, because you wanted a Caesar. <laughs> yes, yeah. So yeah. after that, you know, I was wearing this black fatigues Timberland boots. Yeah, you know, not wrestling boots, Timberlands. Yeah, and I, I was looking this magazine, and, and there was a team called um, there were, uh, the Gangsters. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, what is this? You know, like this sounds cool. I don't know who's the Gangsters was. I know Smoking Mind Wrestling, and of course, I heard Jim Cornette at the time in the NWA. So he owned Smoking Mind Wrestling. So I didn't even know who the guys at. So 1990, if I'm not mistaken, 1996. Pug Enemy, and I used to hate Pug Enemy. Like, I respect those guys. But as a character, as a fan, I'm like, oh, come on, be the two gangsters, you know? You uh, saw through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw these two African American guys, like, now working for ECW, mm. just jump Pug Enemy. And I'm like, what is this? Like, who, <laughs> who are these guys? And, and Joyce, I was like, oh my God, they're the way for. For, they were for Smoking My Rock. They're the gangsters. One of them is Mustafa and New Jack. And I'm looking at New Jack. I'm like, oh, man. The people, they're going to look at me. They're all oh, you a wannabe. And I hate that uh, word, wannabe. So all my life, I was a wannabe New Jack. And I uh, hated it. I hated it so much. Back in 1997, I had a show in Jersey Pro. And I wrestled my good friend named Laura Louie. It was a hardcore yeah, yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. It was a very crazy match. And I had a machete, a machete, mm-hmm. a knife. And there was a reporter, a professional reporter, yelled out, 
Oh, you want to be a new Jack? I jump over the guardrail with a machete and try to cut my Jason Voorhees. <laughs> because I was like really crazy. Like, you, yeah, you didn't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. You want to hear that. I'm myself. I, I get it. And, you know, I understand. Like, but if I, you're going to cut somebody in the audience, a reporter is the worst person to cut. Yeah, a reporter. <laughs> a reporter. Not New York Post, not that news. It was some other like instant message, AOL <laughs> reporter guy. Yeah, like But a... he had connections. So <laughs> it was pretty bad. But yeah, man. Like I just had it so much, so I said to myself, "Okay, I'm gonna do something different." Yeah, you know the difference. I'm going to a different like a, I'm gonna wrestle more mm. than do hardcore stuff, mm. you know. And I wrestle New Jack. Me and God bless him, rest in peace. You know, be good friends. You know, we never have like some kind of beef or whatever. You know, um, he took me under his wing one time. A lot of people don't know that he was gonna take me to the ECW at the time they closed down. We supposed to be the new gangsters, oh. you know, and ECW just boom fall off, you know. And I remember last time we talked, like years ago, mm. you had told me that that was where you wanted yeah. to be, like that you felt like that was. That where was, home was gonna be for that you. was like my career peak and boom it shuts down then he comes ring of honor yeah. and and we didn't knew it was gonna be a phenomenal place a phenomenal promotion we got guys from the west coast like Simon joe uh uh the american dragon then brian whatever his name is right now uh, <laughs> uh christopher daniels you know bitch your weird breath cm punk all those yeah. guys all my guys from new york the SATs, the hits what the low keys you know so, man, it became so awesome at the time. We felt like it was the new All Japan Wrestling and ECW merch in the blender. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. that's the way it felt. And I was more the, the not the hardcore guy. It was more like, well, we need to test somebody out. Give it to Homicide. I'm one mm. of those guys. You're like the like like how X Pac used to be. They say in WWE that they'd like throw him in with X Pac and say like, "How was he?" Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I think I'm still like that right now, but yeah. definitely and Rick Devon was there. Then after that, a couple of years ago, um, I went to Puerto Rico. I wrestled Conan. We clicked very good. Mm -hmm. I knew Conan because I'm a fan. He's a legend, but I don't tell him like, "Oh my God, he's a legend!" Like, nah, I'm be professional, you know. Yeah, you are. You cool, you know. <laughs> Whatever you call that, you know. <laughs> but uh, after that, he's like, "I'm doing a new project in TNA Wrestling," and I heard about TNA Wrestling at the time and pay per views every Wednesday. But um, one day, I wrestled Conker Band and went to New York City, and Mick Foley was there. And Mick Foley was like, man, uh, Big Man will love what you're doing. I, I didn't get what he was saying. I think it was the, all the race, the browns, the, 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 the blacks, the whites. I had them in my hand. Mm. You know, because I was not into, like, like, like that one, you know, the race. I'm, I'm all about everybody, yeah. you know. And Mick kind of, like, digged it. And he said, Mick will like that. Here's a number. You called John at the time. It was the Times relationship. You give him a call. I had picks at TNA or WWE at the time. Yeah. I do that to error. So I picked TNAs because of the travels. You know, I had a baby and everything. Mm. I heard WWE was chaos when the traveling, and I want something new. But Gordon told me I got some, a new project called the Latin America's Change. It'll be myself and this guy named Apollo from Puerto Rico. Now let's see what happens. So I picked that. Mm. So the first time I did, I went to TNA December 29 of 2005, uh, number six. No, excuse me, five, five. And the first thing I did is going to attack Bullet Bob Armstrong and Raw Dog Jesse James. Bro, Bullet Bob Armstrong, I know who that guy is. Like I said, <laughs> I'm a fan. You yeah. know? Like, come on. So I was I was very blessed. Like, oh, wow, this is the first I'm doing. Hell yeah. So we did a few. He come um, um, badass Billy Gunn. They did some kind of gimmick called the VKM. Yeah, and yeah. TNA. And, they, and like I said, uh, Billy Gunn, I respect that dude. He He's an outlaw, bro. <laughs> right, right. I don't care about his ass. He's an outlaw. <laughs> but yeah, man, after that, <laughs> I feel with the guy. <laughs> so it was so cool, man. And after that, it just picked off. Then uh, Paula had some difficulties in Puerto Rico with his car ride. Mm hmm. And he comes, um, this guy named um, Ricky Vega from Florida. His name is Machete, but Jared Jer at the time was the boss. He, oh, two small guys. No, we need somebody. He called Hernandez. Right. You know, we, we wanted that image, like the Hart Foundation, like Bret Hart and the Envil. Yeah. You know, small guy, big guy. He called Hernandez, and we clicked, boom, right away. And it's funny because he was hot stuff, Hernandez. He didn't know nothing about a thug or gangster or whatever. I told him, yo, what kind of movies you like? He told me some kind of a bullet 
corny movies. I tell them, don't go watch American B, bloody, bloody house. And it became ridiculous. They got tattoos. He'd be like, he saw, the he saw the movie. He loves it now. And we did a show. What, was he, what kind of movies was he watching before? Like, what kind of bootleg, like, corny? Like... I don't know, like, some kind of, uh, it's like Twilight. Like, so stupid, <laughs> romantic, the notebook. You know, like, seriously, you that big. You throw people around. You watching that? Uh, he got, he's a good heart person. But still, it's got a sensitive though. side. Yeah, very, very <laughs> sensitive, you know. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> I think I'd be telling you, go watch American B and, and blood and blood out. It's amazing how uh how much film has like influenced you. Yeah. You know, I mean I feel like even as you're describing things, like mm -hmm. you describe kind of everything yeah. by movie characters. You mm -hmm. know, we still your entire career, you know, yeah. twenty whatever years, Michael Myers mask has been a part of it, that's, right? That's my main out of character, natural both sinners. And I use Michael Myers character, and nobody does know what I did is I took Michael Myers part one, Halloween one, and the band called Slipknot. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Slipknot is charisma is ridiculous. And did, wow, Corey from Slipknot's yeah. a huge wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah, so so I mixed that in the blender. Let me put homicide, and I was a big Texas wrestling mark, you know, a fan with the with, with the Von Erichs, the Freebirds, and all that. Then he comes Boogaloo, my partner. Mm -hmm. He loves Harflitz. He loved the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We started a guy in the way he did. And we started the character. Okay, you're going to be Leatherface. Well, we can put some charisma into it. He had a chainsaw and everything. The only bad thing is that we caught ourselves, not only the natural born sinners, but we said we from the haunted houses of the Von Erics. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I think that's going too far. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, so let's let's switch it up because we the controversy sells that time. But I was a big respectful for the Von Erics and I was, it put a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. And I was so you, like, Let, yeah. let's put parts on now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it was true. I mean, back then it was like yeah. shock, 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 shock. It like, was. Like, like it was it was a wild time, but you're right. It's like you look back on that and you're like, eh. Yeah, it put, I don't definitely wanna... put a bad taste. It's like a bad milk. You taste milk and you spit it out. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. You don't want that, you know. But it became great because of politics hit us hard. He went to a different direction of the company. I, I stood in the ring of honor. And I st I'm still doing the Michael Myers character. It's like Brad White. He got the fiend. He got the happy guy. You know, he's yeah, all yeah. happy. So I'm homicide, the, the G from the streets of New York. Then when I get crazy, I put the mask on. I put some slim nut on. I got my fork and, you know, I yeah. go crazy. Yeah, that's but that's the issue, though, is like people are like, Homicide is the toned down version. <laughs> That's the great, yeah. It, it's a little bit too homicide, a little tall, you know. So, so Danny DeMonto got a promotion called, um, called ICW New York. Yeah. He had a good idea because they called me D as Demon because I was part of a crew. Mm. At the time, long story short, you know, I was like very, um, I was getting abused by priests. I was a Catholic. That's your character? And no, not character. Real life. Real life. Damn. And, 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 and yeah, a bunch of priests smacked me up, abused me. And wow. I told my mom, my mother was laughing at me. I had black eyes. Yo, everything was bad. At the time, I was like, why God is doing this? Then I became a little bit goth, a little bit devil, you know, stuff like that. Putting my nails black, you know, being stupid. I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. The one day, <laughs> one, um, one of the former friends of mine, so they worshiper, told me, hey, Merry Christmas. I'm like, wait, hold up. Why are you saying that to me? Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus was born at Christmas. And I was so confused. I don't know what to believe, you know. So basically, I beat up those guys <laughs> into the golf, you know. And the crew that I was down with, um, they do prayers. I'm like, I'm not doing a prayer. So they they told tell me in Spanish, oh, do le demonio, like I'm a demon, you know. We're gonna call you demon. So for years, that's you know, that's where D came from. Wow, you know. So people got lazy. We call you demon. We not call you demon. D, we call you D, yeah. <laughs> so now with the Michael Myers, they call me demon. You know. Right. So so it, it's not demon like fan. Finn Bella, you know. I yeah. got two E's now. I want E. You know? That's crazy though, because I knew like I knew your name was D, but yeah. I was like. I wonder if his middle name starts with a D or something like that. Yeah, that's a, it, wild, what a wild. Yeah, it's it's a tag name, but man. Yeah, it, it's really demon. But people, I like, know, me not quite demon. And to me, look, I even got a gel tattoo, demon. Yeah, it's my prison tattoo. I got like doing bad things, and yeah, people just you know, be gonna quite D, especially people that respect. 
who's Christian, uh-huh. who's wrestlers, nah, we're not going to call you that. No, we're going to call you a real name. Man, I feel I got a bad history with my father at the time uh-huh. who gave me the name Nelson, you know? Right. And I hated the name Nelson. I joked around like I'm the guy for the Simpsons. You know? I just beat up people up, you know? <laughs> the bully. But, yeah, but after I have my son and I'm stupid, like, ah, I just call him Nelson. Dude. He's junior. You know, so I'm not going to hate that name because that's my that's son's, son's name, name too, you know, so I don't care no more, you know. Yeah. But yeah, to this day, people still call me D. Yeah, that is, that's so great. So when you went, did you, were you in jail when you were younger? Yes. Or, yeah. I, I went to juvenile first. Uh-huh. That's when, I don't know if you remember, Mayor Giornati did the rule book, like whoever's 16, got to go to Rikers. Wow. And I went to Rikers, C76. At 16? 16. I was there for three months. Whew. Yeah, man. It was a very, uh, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. It was. I mean, like, when you're living this life, mm. 16, you're in Rikers. When you're yeah. at home, the priests are beating you up. Yeah. Like, you don't have a good relationship with your dad. Like, does it make the politics of wrestling a lot easier when when you know how difficult life mm. can be? It just uh, back then it was easier. Now it's like I don't care no more. Nothing. I just I just want people to listen to me. You know, like I don't care if you don't understand me. Uh, 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 I'm from the body of the hood. Just yeah. Please listen to me. Like I had a dream and that dream just shut down. You know, like my dream was MSG. That I did all the wrestling. Then I, I wrestled the Arthur Ashe Stadium, the the U.S. Open, you know, and I was like incredible in Queens, New York. And mind you, it was like a visit. I came to just to visit my friends. Yeah. And they told me you're doing something today. Like, no, I'm not doing nothing. Really? So yeah. you you just popped in to be like, oh, Eddie Kingston and all my all my yeah. buddies are here. Punks, hit, like everybody, yeah. like let me I just say just, hi. Yeah, exactly. And I was so. I appreciate grateful man that everybody said no you're gonna do something in Rampage the last the last match of the night it yeah. was last Archer and Maru Suzuki yeah. who was the legend of all legends yeah. against one of my pals Eddie Kingston and another one John Moxley a street fight match yeah. and it was the very end that it didn't even hit me what hit me is behind the scenes that um Eddie did a little speech that you know his mother was there he made it he made it and suddenly, Frank Sinatra came along. It was New York, New York. And that's when it hit me. Like, oh, my God. I can't, that's when I was like, forget about my dream, my MSG. I mean, this is? I, I'm here. This is my MSG. This is the dream. This like, is I my mean, moment. A, a, a building is the building. You're looking. The dream is the moment, yeah, right? Yeah. I just couldn't believe it was 20,000 people. And I just couldn't believe Even though it was TV taping, it was still it was still the best. You know? I mean, and it's 20,000 people, too. And this is the part that, like, hit me. <laughs> that, like... Because I've known you forever, mm-hmm. but it's like, you're not on that TV show. Yeah. And all 20,000 of those people went nuts. They didn't just know who yeah. you were when you came out. Yeah. They went nuts. The internet was like, oh, you got to do the Rampage. Homicide shows up at the end. Like, it was a big deal. It was incredible. Like, it was one of the biggest months of my life. Yeah. And it was funny because I wanted to do something like I come out the audience, like Stone Coast. I was like, I like, got arrested for jumping out and... Like, no, we got music for you. Like, wait, what? Wow. We got something like a time trial with your name on it. And I'm like, wait, are you kidding me? Yeah. And like, and they did it. And I'm like, okay. You know, I'm not going to say, like, no to the boss. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not. So, you know better than me. No, exactly. <laughs> and it, it was right. It was it was phenomenal then. They went to a show in Philadelphia. I came, and man, I'm very grateful for one man right now. My dream was to, uh, to be a WWF wrestler. ECW, I want to go to walk down the ramp of the Tokyo Dome for New Japan Wrestling. Didn't happen, but something happened to me. And I went to Seattle last week for a promotion called Defy Pro Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. In Seattle. Phenomenal, phenomenal promotion. I'm not a big religious guy. I do believe in God, but something hit me. Like, I got a sign. Like, I went to Seattle for the first time ever. It's like, boom, you're not getting signed. You're going to be like a street legend or something like that. Yes. And I don't consider myself a legend. I'm very humble. I don't consider myself the king of New York, the guy of New York, the legend. I'm just very humble to be here and still still be alive. Um, I'm still walking. People still call me. I'm just got to never forget where I came from, you know? But, I mean, I think it's too, it's important when you talk about, like, oh, this was my dream, that was my dream. Because I was thinking about last night, just thinking about the fact that, like, oh, there's a whole generation, I mm. think, like, you, 
Punk, a whole generation of people, really that first Ring of Honor generation that it's like, all you guys should have mm. been the next class of ECW. Yes. You know what I mean? That's clearly what it was, but it didn't happen. But then I was thinking about it and it's like, one of the first major programs that you worked in Ring of mm. Honor. Yes. Was with Steve Carino. Yes. And it's like, so, okay, <laughs> like, how do we really define this dream, right? Like, yeah. the, maybe the letters ECW weren't mm. on it, but you're here yeah. on the East Coast, the big, the third biggest promotion, or WWE wasn't even around, so for a period of time, Ring of Honor is the second biggest promotion yeah. in the United States. It was. And you're sitting there in a hot program yeah. with, with the king of old school, school, Steve school. Carino. So, you know, and I tell you, man, we didn't like each other. I was, you didn't. I, I respect him so much, mm -hmm. so much, you know. I think he is the man. I'm not going to be one of those guys like, man, it's cool, Steve Carino, you know. I'm not. He's the man, mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah, man, it was one of those moments. It did hit me later on, like, oh, wow, I'm doing something with this guy? Yeah. He is the man, even though I hate his guts, you know. <laughs> but he's the man. You know? But he is the man. It's weird. Like, yeah, that's cool, that guy. He's the man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking, you can, because Steve Carino, the entity, this guy that you watched in wrestling, everything mm. he's accomplished, he's the man. Yeah. Maybe that's separate from your your... Interactions with the guy. Right? Yeah, and I felt like it was the new Dusty Rose and Terry Funk. Yeah. I don't know if you know about that. Like, yeah. Terry Funk always like, oh, you yellow sucking dog. <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. Be, yeah. Now it's kind of cool that nobody does know I'm helping his son, like Kobe Carino. Like, I knew when he was with diapers coming along. He came bring his son to the venue. He was, he was like maybe five years old. Yeah, you should write Kobe's name on his, on yeah. his tape, right? Yeah. He, yeah, and now he's wrestling um, for the NWA. He's wrestling tonight, the Kyle's wrestling. He's becoming big, man. He's he's he got a bright future, that kid. I think so, too. Yeah, I think he's really, really good. I really think if he gets his um, promo skills like his dad's, mm -hmm. oh, man, watch out. I mean, he's good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But he just needs that one little thing he's missing is that promo skills. Do you have like a... A promotion that you feel like is home because it's like you've worked everywhere you know mm. jersey all pro like legend there ring of honor yeah. i mean you and the briscoes are literally the only yeah. three <laughs> yeah first show last, last show. show grand opening grand closing yeah. like you know i mean you to impact obviously tna like mm. a huge yes person in the in the legacy of tna and you're talking about big japan and you're talking mm. about nwa now NWA obviously now, yeah like do you have is there one promotion that you're like, I'm one of those guys, or is it like, no man, I'm across the, I'm homicide. That's it. It's hard. Like, I really love the National Wrestling Alliance. Yeah, like I got this my hoodie. Like I really love those guys. Um, I'm a producer and agent there. I'm behind the scenes. You know, that's and awesome. I'm like Coach Joe Torrey for the Yankees. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's it's kind of cool, you know, and I, I like to build, I'm I'm a big fan of the NWA back in the 80s, you know, and then I studied 60s and the 70s. I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm part of the NWA. Just like I'm going to be part of the, the, the WF. I'm, I wasn't, but I am with the NWA. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of cool, you know. Then we got Brent of Honor, you know, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I might get in trouble, but I really don't care. You know? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> They did like a TV tapings that I was the very last match because there's a rumor that they done. I think they're going to take a hiatus and they're going to come back with a different, you know, look and everything. Yeah. But I was part of the last match. It was the 12 man tag match. And the opposite of the corner was the Briscoe Brothers, you know. And after that match, I gave them a hug. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the memories. You know, I had so many great memories there. Um, TNA, I, I man, I had so many great memories in TNA. And Pat Wilson too, even though I feel that it's too little different. I mean, it's the same, but it's a little bit too different sure, things, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But um, I just feel right now, like, NWA, to me, is like my baby, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I want to help those guys. But, of course, I like to help other crews, you know? They got, right now, I just, just got into MLW, even though I was part of the originals, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm part of the new squad of the MLW, and this is what happens with that. Um, Rid of Honor, you know, same um, hopefully do better mm -hmm. than ever. Um, Impact, I think I'm done with Impact. You know? I'm, not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying I'm bad things about it, but that's it, it's a wrap. You know yeah. what I mean? I want to pass the torch to my, my new guys, the LEX guys. Mm -hmm. like, he's a torch. Do your thing. Not yeah. the only wrestling, though. No. But I think I would say Ender Your Weight. That's, 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 my, your, that's your, yeah. your home now. Yeah. That, that's what feels like home. Yeah. And it is, too. I mean, talk about uh, 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 Slipknot. Mm. Like I grew up a Smashing Pumpkins fan, so the idea, like oh. when I see Billy Corgan at yeah. shows, and he's like, "Hey, what's up, Sam?" I'm like, 
but you're, you're, and it's like, no, he's like, and it's yeah. like, he's just, it's so fun to talk to somebody like that about wrestling. And you're like, oh, he bleeds this just like all and of bro, us. Like he, he's a fan, but yeah. he's smart. He knows what he's saying, man. Like, I'll be having meetings with him. I'm like, man, this guy knows stuff. And it's funny because at the time, I don't know not about Smash the Pumpkins. <laughs> I was talking about Slayer. And next to him, like, he's a rock star, this guy. You know? I'm talking about Slayer. Like, yeah, like, who's Smash the Pumpkins? I like pumpkins, like pumpkin pie or whatever. Yeah, you know? but, yeah. But the I'm pumpkin not, from that movie, Halloween. Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. <laughs> I like that, but yeah, they, they smart me up. Like, oh, we're oh my bag. You know? <laughs> but that dude, is, he's really a smart guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I don't. I mean, I don't think he's there for a nah, bunch of fans man. to be around him. He's there for wrestling brands. Yeah, to he's be, very passionate. Yeah. That's what I like about this guy, man. He's very passionate about, uh, about his product. I'm happy that he brought the NWA back to life. You know, because back in the days, it, that promotion was phenomenal to yeah. me. It was like NWA, then ECW. The Ring of Honor, now you got everything going on. That's the way I see it, you know? And he brought it back. So I'm kind of happy with what he did. And I think the product, especially I'm there, I got to make sure, you know? I'm very passionate, a team player. I'm bringing that passion and giving it to everybody. We're going to do something, and we're going to make it. What was it like, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago? You are there in Queens. Mm. You got Minoru Suzuki. Mm. I mean, that had to be yeah. unbelievable for you. Yeah. Well, big shout out to Brett Law though and Gage and Wrestling. It's because, wild what they're doing yeah. too. Yeah, it is. It is why that's the new ECW, but that's not a story that I got talked about. <laughs> but um, <laughs> hit me up. He said, hey, you ever wrestled Minoru Suzuki? Nah, man, but he is my last of the bucket list of all the legends of Japanese wrestling. But I'm a big fan of Japanese wrestling. My hero is Mas Masahiro Chono. That's my hero, but he got a neck injury, can't wrestle. So right. I'm like, ugh. I wrestle Kojima. That's my other hero. That's why I do a diamond cutter, while well, we call it Koji Cutter. The Lariat is from him. You know, of course, the guys like Slants and all that. I wrestle Liger, who's like, he's a legit Thunder God. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, legit. <laughs> like, he is the Mario Man, the Mount Rushmore, Japan wrestling. He is like God of. Cruiserweights, like Did Tiger Mask. Was that a Jersey All-Pro yeah, that you wrestled Liger? Yeah, yes. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... And, and I beat him. Yeah. But the time we got her, I'm like, <laughs> bitch, uh, so yeah, it was so cool. I wrestled Mas, 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 Masato Tanaka from ECW. Yeah. I wrestled him in Japan. I wrestled him in the United States, in Jersey Pro. So I wrestled all these Japanese guys. And to me, I teamed up with Ken Takabashi. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's like the Wu Chen clan of wrestling right there. You know, I was like blessed. But when they told me Minu Suzuki, I'm like, I, this got to be a joke. It gotta be a joke. This yeah. is not for real. Then he's like, "Yo, D, I'm I'm not playing. You want to wrestle? Him? Of course, because that's part of my final bucket list." Yeah. Then it didn't hit me. Yeah, it didn't hit me. You know, that day happened. I met him. I've been in met all the wrestling actually. You no, know, I said, "Hi, how you doing? My name is Hamasai." You know, he doesn't know me at all. So, and GCW. <laughs> I do, uh, by the way. I like that you have a polite way of being like, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. My name is Homicide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got to be polite, yeah. I wonder what they Yeah, Homicide. Homicide. Uh, homicide. Yeah. They call me Homicide. <laughs> I think I enter me. That's good. Oh, Homicide. Because you do it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, game changer, like, he came up to me. He said, we're going to do our thing. He was very humble. That's one thing I respect him so much. He's very humble. Mm -hmm. At first, it was like, oh, he's one of those guys. Like, you know, bad attitude. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like a real shoot fight. You know, mm -hmm. UFC kind of thing. You know, and but you were, were you ready for that mm -hmm. if it turned like... Yeah, yeah, I'm always ready. I'm always ready. You know, I'm always ready. Like, I'm not, I got a background. <laughs> you know, MVP call it the black belt pro wrestling. Uh -huh. You know, I got that. And also, I got my ghetto black belt. I got my razor blade just in case. You know, my fault. <laughs> but nah. But Zuki was, you know. Yeah. I felt like... If you go to kick bass, at least let me punch him in the face. You know? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Let me punch his face. He got a little bark and go to Japan. That whole beside did that to me. <laughs> like, you know, but he was so cool. He is incredible. You know, one of the best matches of my career was mm -hmm. but, but well, excuse me, it was Liger, mm -hmm. but Suzuki topped it. Wow. And um, in the end, you can see the video. He got a microphone. He can say, thank you, homicide. Can I curse here? I sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Man, I love curse. <laughs> so you gotta, I love curse. Yeah. 
Hey, like, we want so sense of this planet, you know? Yeah. Like, this is a new human life now. But anyway, so he say, oh, uh, thank you, New York City, and thank you, fucking homicide. And I'm like, holy shit, did he just say that? <laughs> now, fake, and you can see the video of me cheesing, laughing, like, oh, wow. He really said that. We go to the bank, man, give me so much props. That's when he remembered me. That's awesome. He was like, man, I knew it was that over. Yeah, I'm kind of big out here, so I don't know. <laughs> but I'm cool, you know. And now people call me, the, I'm the American Suzuki. I don't know what that means, but it's us cool. It's so, a compliment. There it right? is. It's it a is. compliment. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like it. But yeah, he's, he's amazed, that guy, man. He's one of those guys, man, he needs help. I would go to Japan to help him out. That's awesome. That's incredible that guy is. Do you, uh, do you think sometimes, man, like, not only about your bucket list, mm. but when you look at your list of not only people that, like, work with you, mm. but people that would say, like, you know those people respect you just as much as you respect them. Because, I mean, like, when you think about the people that you've worked with, mm. it's literally the top names in the industry. Mm. I mean, you're talking about AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, yeah. CM Punk. Like, I mean, you know, the list just goes... MVP was, you know, everybody. Yeah. Everybody that's at the top, is that's your... That's your class. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It is. It is. And they really hit me, like, late. My friends, I didn't. To me, I'm like, whatever. But they really hit me. Like, oh, wow. Okay, I got a cool class. You know? Yeah. You know? And Eddie Kings, they always yell at me. Like, oh, what's wrong with you, man? You should be, you know, feeling like in the higher level. Like, not egotistic. I always tell them, like, have a little ego. Be confident that you're good, you know? Now he's going to feel with CM Punk. He doesn't realize what he's doing, you know. Uh-huh. Like I'm, I'm in a good way though. In a right, good way. Right. CM Punk is one. He is one of the best in his business. Yeah. As a wrestler, uh, promo skills, even a, a a human being. You know, this man went to ECW, WWE. He was a millionaire, and he still remembered the little people like myself. He still calls me. I respect that so much. Yeah. There's so many people like, oh, he's an asshole. He's a cool asshole. I don't <laughs> tell you. I like Punk, you know. No. So, and, and I'm very happy that Eddie's going to get that kind of program with CM Punk because I never had a major feud with CM Punk. I did wrestle CM Punk. He's incredible. Mm-hmm. And he still got it. And I want him to, he, even he's older, I still want him to go and get busy, you know, mm-hmm. go out there and get busy and take care of my boy, you know. Yeah. And Eddie's gonna he's gonna do it. Yeah. And that's gonna be a great, great feud. It's gonna be great. And just seeing, I mean, just seeing Eddie Kingston in the position that he's in. Yeah. It's like it's gotta make it's it, it, it's gotta make you elated. Yeah. You know? If he see if he feels like, oh, I still need more, I don't know what's wrong with you, bro. Like <laughs> you got concussions or something. Like he's in the top of the chain right now, man. He's doing so well. He should be proud of himself. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, then you look at, but also, you know, I feel like you have done a similar thing where I feel like every room that you go in, yeah. whether people know you when they show up mm. or get to know you once you're there, it's like as soon as you walk out, people are like, I know who this is. I know yeah. what this is. And like, they're on your side yeah. immediately. Like you have that thing. That connection, yes. right? That they talk about in wrestling, like that's, that's one mm. to me the most important thing mm. is connecting with the audience, and I mm. feel like that's why you skyrocketed in Jersey All Pro and Ring of Honor and everywhere you go. It's like, yeah, there's just something about, and maybe it's that it's that working class thing, maybe it's that thing that you seem authentic. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's more also respect, man. I just want to be respected. I bust my butt since '94. I want to be part on that level that everybody's part of. Mm-hmm. I know I could be part of that level. You know, just give me a chance. Give me a try. I, just listen to me, you know? Yeah. And boom, I came up a little bit quiet, but I came up and boom, it's just explosive. Yeah. And I'm very blessed, man. I'm very happy that I feel with guys like Simone Joe. I had a great feel with Cole Cabana. Yeah. Now, man, the list going and. I never think stuff like that. And that's where the kids here like smack me back in my head. What's wrong with you, man? Like, I never do because, like I said, one of my fears, never forget where you came from. That's mm-hmm. one of my fears. I never forget because I got a lot of friends, my close friends forgot where they came from. Mm. And I think that's, that's kind of whack. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. I don't want to be part of that. And sometimes I don't feel like, I, yes, there was a promotion called Outlaw Wrestling in Long Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boo James, that's a promotion. Great, great promotion. And they give me a little, a little locker room. I mean, it was nice, couch, drinks, and everything. Man, I'm gonna hang out with the big boys, you know. I'm, man, I'm not with that, you know. So I hung out with the 
but the locals, you know, mm -hmm. the, the guys who's under me, you know, because that's the way I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never figured where I came from. I bust my butt. I'm from Brooklyn, New York City, from the poor. I never, I'm, if I be rich, I'm never going to fail where I came from. Right. You know, and wrestling, the same thing, too. You know, I, I wrestle in barns, black parties, you know, <laughs> stadiums. I did it all. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. It's cool, man. Like, when I die, I hope I don't, but even though we all going to die, right. I want to be like a Highlander. Like, I don't want to die. <laughs> no. But, hey, man, that, at the time, I'll be like, hey, man, I did it. Even though I'm not part of WrestleMania, yeah. part of Tokyo Dome, but I still got that, you know, that it factor. So, who put together uh, Violence Unlimited? Because, man, like, I was thinking about that. It's like, if, <clears throat> if, if I were going to start a promotion mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. it's like, you're right there in that Terry Funk role of experience. Yes. But then the guys that you're with in that group, Chris Dickinson, Tony Deppin, <laughs> Brody King. It's like, those are the guys. Like, those, yeah. like the fact that a promotion hasn't already scooped all three of them up is like, yeah, it's like what are you doing? Like, these are the yeah. guys. So, so was that, did you see those guys and go, we should do something together? Or did, did Ring of Honor come and go like, this is what we're thinking? Or? Um, I uh, Brody King is the one that made up. Uh, I think I uh, know. I think it was Brody King. I read about it, but Brody King went had an idea. Let's do this. Let's bring back these uh, homicide. Chris mm -hmm. Dixon, Tony, and one day I got a call and I did. A, it was one of those. Okay, but to, <laughs> tomorrow and boom. Then I sat down. I'm like, man, we some badasses, you yeah. know. Because Brody King, he's he he's good yeah that guy he reminds me like Bruce Brody doing Lucha Libre <laughs> with tattoos looking like hey breed you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no but he's he's good Tony Dapper he's phenomenal I get to know him even more and I'm like man this guy's really good yeah you know and I like the way he looks he might kick my ass but he looks like a school teacher who can kick ass <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah yeah he looks like, like if Mr. Rogers like yeah. took off the sweater and you were like oh no yeah exactly yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. a library or something <laughs> <laughs> like, we're a Spike Dudley with the Tampa, yeah. there, that's him, you know? <laughs> yeah. And Chris Dickinson, man, psh, forget it. Like, to me, like, people compare me to the, the new kid in New York. I think he's the new guy, you know? That guy that comes in, who comes after me, you know? That guy, is he's incredible. And that's interesting about Chris Dickinson, too, because <clears throat> he's also a Jersey All-Pro kid. Like, he was he was a young, young, young yeah. guy when you were there. He was a fan, and he told me stories like, I did that? Oh, wow, that go to my tapes like, oh, I did that. He, <laughs> he, he don't play around, man. He's very passionate, man. You need people like that. You need people in your team. That's the type of person that you need in your team is Dickinson. Yeah. Brody King, too, and Tony Denver. That's a great crew, man. I've been through a lot of crews, you know. Yeah. And that crew, yeah. man, woo, that crew is money. <laughs> yeah. That's the bank, the chase, the PSC bank, <laughs> Pull all the blessings, but... <laughs> Yeah, man, if, if we're never closed down, it's a rumor. Yeah. I really hope at least, like, have new members of the of Violent Limited. Man, that crew is so good, you know? And yeah. Dixon, all those guys. Me, even though I talk a lot of crap, like, I'm done, I'm going to retire. I sound like Terry Fox sometimes, <laughs> you know? But I get so burned out and I get so bitter. Not bitter, like, the party comes in. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, man, screw this, man. I'm doing this, you know? Need, I don't need this. Yeah, yeah. man. And I do that. Man, I'm done. I'm done. I get injured. I'm done. I'm done, you know? And something keep pulling me back in. How I many, how many times back. have you retired? I would say six. <laughs> six times. Six times. Six I'm, times. I think I got like a while, like 12 more to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, does anybody believe you when yeah. you go like, like I'm done? No, okay, dude. But I, I think that's cool. They don't believe because they know me. And yeah, yo, yeah, dude, whatever. Okay. Stop <laughs> bullshit. Like, oh, all right, <laughs> I can to dig that, but you know me like that. And everybody does now. It's getting ridiculous now. Yeah. If I say right now I'm gonna retire next year, I get yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> because I feel like I, I'm gonna be done when I'm 45. I'm 44. Yeah. I don't want to go when I'm 46 as a performer. But of course, I all mean, the guys, they'll be like, yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to go when you're 46 because you're not 46. Nah. Like, when you're 46, you're not going to feel like you're 46. You're going to nah. go like, ah, oh, this feels different. I, hey, I no. think I can still go. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I feel like that right now. Like, I'm 44 and all that. I still got up to doing suicide dives like and stuff if, like, like that. Like, if you were a kid, right? Like, if we were sitting here having this conversation right in the middle of your, like, Steve Carino rivalry, yeah. and I was like... You gonna be, you're gonna you, you can still be doing this at forty. You'd probably be like, no, I'm done by thirty five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think I really have been before. Yeah, like, crazy. But like, yeah, like I don't want to do one forty six. Even though 
talk a little crap. I might do something 146. Yeah. But I really don't. You don't think so? I, really I just need a closure. A great closure. Well, yeah, so what do you think? What do you think that last match for you looks like? Like so many the thing about like, you know, this is my dream, that's my dream, is like yeah. these dreams like change and also like, you know, this is like, oh, this is the representation of that. Yeah. So like you've lived so many of your dreams and just the fact that you've had a mm -hmm. career in wrestling yeah. and you're a legend and like have the amount of respect that you do, that's the dream ultimately. Mm -hmm. So what's the thing? Like what would your last match be well, or, you know, would it be a program or what? Like, I, I would love a program, but my vision, the way I see it is it got to be in New York City. Yeah. I gotta bring my mother. My mother never came to a professional wrestling. She's one of the the people that told me, this is not a job. Get a real job. Go to Key Food or something. <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> nah, but. Key <laughs> 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 Food? Get out of here. That's a career. At least Giants, you know? Like, yeah, I first said, well, I want to become a baseball player. Like, no, that's too dangerous. What? <laughs> okay. They said Kifu. Uh, well, yeah, to bring my bring my mother and uh, hang my boots, put them in the ring, and just leave. Tell tell people thank you so much and leave. And my new my new chapter era has become one of those guys like behind the scenes. I would not wear a suit, no, <laughs> but yeah. I'll be behind the scenes kind of guy, like a producer, a coach, or an agent, or whatever. But as a performer, my vision is. Wrestle uh, somebody from New York City. Re wrestle my last match in New York. And there's a reason why New York. No offense to other like cities and countries, but I started in New York. I'm going to finish New York. Mm -hmm. a lot of, it's like a movie. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to take a homicide. The only one who's going to take a homicide is homicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I already got a video too, like homicide's walking the street and there's a guy with a barrel of shotgun and just kill homicide. The camera turns around, right, it's me. I'm like, oh, you shit, did it. I did it. That's I can, cool. I can help us that's out. cool. <laughs> uh, so th that's my vision. Like, I bring my mother, you know, yeah. hopefully she's doing this planet, you know. And, um, yeah, so, take my boots and put them in me. All right, so what if, like, Brett Lauderdale called you and he was like, yo, we're running the Hammerstein in January. What if that's your retirement match? Uh, January too soon. Too soon, right? Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. That's the terrible moment. Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> yeah, no, too no, soon. no, no, no. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm still coming to support. Right. You no, know, um, I'm not You're there. You're not ready to I'm, hang the boots just nah, yet. No, no, yeah. I'm not. Even though I thought about it, he, he did a show for me, 5150 in Brooklyn, New yeah. York. I was not retired. Then somehow, like, nah. nah. And I, <laughs> I wrestled Mr. Suzuki, and I was thinking about it. I told mm -hmm. my friend, I think I'm done. Right. That's like my life. Perfect. Queens, New York. I guess one of the guys that I realized more of my bucket list. I think I'm done. Then I'm like, nah. nah. No. Who, so, would, who would have thought, by the way, that like you were a bootleg undertaker when you first, first started. Mm. And now your career is like that documentary with The Undertaker and all his last matches at WrestleMania when he's like, maybe this is going to be the last one. Yeah. Nah. Nah. nah not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Too soon. Not yet. Not yet. Not yeah. I need to feel it. Now, you know what? The Homicide Bar Room is in January. <laughs> and it's, it's just it's beginning of the new year. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that I love to have my last match at Halloween, but if you look at the calendar, I think it's not going to be on a Friday or on Saturday. So... But Halloween would be perfect. Even Christmas, you know? Christmas. Yeah, yeah even Christmas. You know, <laughs> Bahamba told us both of us out there. You know? <laughs> but, but yeah, like, it's too early for us to room. I just feel that um, I'm I'm supportive. I want G-Show to blow up. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to Hamas up room. All right, guys, there's the pressure. I'm putting pressure on you. Yeah. Let's blow it up. Let's this do is it. what you want. Let's that, do it. That's what I want for those guys. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, Did you ever think, like, uh, behind the scenes would be where you'd end up? Like, when you... I mean, you know, obviously in your 20s and even mm. in your early 30s, like, you never think about that stuff. But, nah. like, as you... As you're wrestling, like, at what point did you go, I think I want to keep doing this forever, but obviously I can't perform forever. I'm going to find other parts of the business that I'm going to be able to do. It was a match that I was... First of all, I had a match with many, me and Eddie Keystone was the Dawson's. Mm -hmm. And one of the Dawson's hit me with a chair shot in the head. And it was at the time I got a couple of concussions. Doctor telling me you gotta 
a bite size, eh, you know, it's one of those. But um, I yell at them. And they're good peoples. I like those guys, but I yell at them real bad. You know, I'm talking about death. Like, I'm going to kill you do this again. You know, it was bad. And um, Rick and Morton just pat me in the ass like a football player. Good kid. That's the way you talk to them. I'm like, wait, what? Rick and Morton just did that? <laughs> <laughs> then um, I stopped Dave. Like, I came up to me. It was show. He was like, I think you should be an agent. And I'm like, okay, why? I said, because we need something like that in our locker room, like a locker room leader. Mm. You know, like because that's my aura. When I go to a locker room, respect everything. Everything got to be in check. You know, I'm not there to be a boss. It's just the way it is. It's a call the rule. Mm. Like, if I'm not in the show, I'm bringing my gear with me just in case. Right. You know, but as a locker room, that's my aura. I'm definitely going to come. I am a leader. I'm not a follower. You know, right. so... He told me, hey, be an agent. And I felt, mm. He said, I don't want you to wrestle. Then I feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, that got some kind of advices for the Rockwell Express, Er Hefner, Dave Hefner, and D, I think it's that time, you know, your body's banged up, you know, just take it easy, do this, you're going to have fun. Suddenly, the first match I agent was the Rockwell Express. And to me, I was walking out fan like, oh my, like I was joking around like I'm your boss, so mm -hmm. you need to listen to me, you know, to to Ricky Martin and give. Nah. Then after that, it was a match. Basically, too, it was Thunder Rosa and Camille, and then something happened that Trevor Murdoch was the agent. Then we did a switch. That I'm gonna be agent for that match, and uh, I was like a kid, like 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 a high school, like some kind of football game, watching kids, you know, just standing up screaming like. And that's when I knew, like, I think I'm going to do this forever. You no, know, because of that match. You no, know, because that match wow. was so, so great. Things happened uh, behind the scenes about that match, but they became very professional. You know, Thunder Rose was one of the greatest women wrestlers in the world. Camille, she's the, she's the future. You know, mm -hmm. she, I, that, I'm going to be real. At the time, she was like, ah, now nah. she's like, okay, she got something. You know, she definitely, people need to watch out for her. Mm hmm. And um, at that match, that's when I feel like, yeah, I'm doing this. This is my new life right now. I'm I'm gonna start learning, you know, talking to these legends out there. I'm doing this, and boom, I fell in love. That's amazing. I you fell in love. love again. I fell in love, man. At first, I was going through. It's called wrestling depression. Uh -huh. Like, ah, uh, I got. Like, <laughs> you want to go to work, right? But you want to go to work happy, right? You don't want to be like, oh, I gotta go to work, you know. And the end of my years wrestling, it was like that. Mm. You know, like, oh, I really want to take a trip to such and such and do this. I really don't want to. All right. I think about paycheck. Oh, I need this money, you know, for my kid, whatever, for the house. Now it's like, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the way you got a pay-per-view in December. It's called Hard Times 2. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. I'm not performing. I'm an agent. That's amazing. And uh, I'm excited about that, you know. And we had a show in Kentucky. And there was a match. It was um, Memes and um, I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. He got a mask. But Memes became a star. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was another match. Uh, it was this girl named um, Paige and Carmella. Mm -hmm. Ka um, she became a star. And, man, it, December is going to be so good. I can't that's, wait. That's awesome. That's awesome. you talking about getting mad. What? Was your attitude like that night in Impact or TNA? Mm. You were hanging off that goddamn cage, and they were just leaving you up there. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, God curse. Yeah. I right, fuck these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, why is it so embarrassing? I tell you, I was in the embarrassing part, you know. I don't want to say fuck Hulk Hogan. You know, he's a legend. But, he's a legend, but, but with capital letters, but you know, <laughs> I always remember like we had a meeting. Hogan was talking. He he wanted to take over. You know, he wanted to um, compete Victor McMahon, the Monday Night Challenge, and I was like, Nah, man, let's stay. Let's stay Thursdays. Yeah, let's do our not thing. go. We're not going to compete with a billion dollar company. I didn't even know that time with the billion dollars, but we're not going to compete with Doug. But he had the cojones, the boss, to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Then it was the little stupid Mad Max Thunderdome K 
caged, look like Mel Gibson. And <laughs> first of all, I got so mad because um, I'm I'm a great storyteller of matches. Uh, I think it was Jalito. He had like some kind of a stick, a metal pipe or something mm. inside of a cage. Mm-hmm. Hit some. Uh, no, excuse me. I hit someone. That's how pissed I was. I forgot my whole thing. <laughs> so I hit somebody. And it said, I'm the Q. So let me go to this fucking, this stupid, the, the hole. angle <laughs> hole. Yeah, it like, up. it like domed up. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, a, like you could climb up the side, but it like domed up. And then there was like a little circle yeah. in the middle. But you had to like shimmy up a ceiling almost. Exactly. Like be be horizontal. It was horrible. Very, It's really a workout. You know, I work out, but it was really one of those workout things. So... That moment, meaning like um, in the morning, Terry Teller came up to me. Who's a, to me, he's a great guy. I mm. love Terry Teller. To me, um, D, I want you to practice that. And I was confident. I'm very confident. No, I'm good. I should have practiced, you know, <laughs> because I got a bad show at the time. Oh, a, that's even worse. I had a rotated cut surgery. It was being Steve Carino yep. at Emory of Honor wow. in 2004. I did a little tope and... And the picture looked like he Ric Flair me, meaning Ric Flair go to the top row and yeah. somebody do the whoop. He did that to me. And my bone, it was in New York City, but the Knicks um practiced that. I forgot where, but yeah, I had this bone coming out. Oh. And I was stabbing him for real with my, my <laughs> hand because it was bad. So yeah, they told me you need surgery. That was in 2004. I had the surgery in 2015. That match happened in January. I don't even know what the day is, but it was 2010. The first live show and Monday competing with my Night Raw. And the first day was I was going to be in that match. I was the first person, the first big angle, the first everything. And I fucked up. <laughs> Why well, kind of bad? That was one of the most embarrassing moments in my career. Yeah. You know, I should have practiced it, but I did tell I got a bad shoulder. How about we do something else? And it's starting to make no sense. I hit somebody with a damn cane, a pipe, and you DQ me. Then I got to climb this little stupid hole. <laughs> and I got to pause like Tom Dreamer. Like, come on. Like, it, it was like, yeah, Jeff Hardy comes in, yeah. beat me up, and stuff like that. So that's what he did. He was late. You know, his music play, and he was late for his right. action. And yeah, I just go at them, and he beat me up. And I told Vince Russo, who was the whatever it is, time relationship. I told him, hey, how about me and Jeff Hardy do a program? Oh, let me think about it, kid. When somebody say, let me think about it and put that hand up, I already know what that means. I ain't stupid. Yeah. I smoke a lot of that nature, drink, <laughs> but I know what that means, you know. So I'm like, yeah, they messed up. Like, yeah. meaning like, I'm going to get released. So that's in January. So I had a match at Corny Allen. I was so spanky, Brian Kendrick. I did my little dive. He didn't call me. I put two groin injuries. Mm-hmm. I'm a mess now. I got two groin injuries, a bad shoulder. I'm saying to myself, I'm getting released. Here come August. <laughs> and Terry Teller called me and said, hey, Nelson, um, I'm sorry. We got to release you. And I did a, okay. <laughs> and he was like, that's it? Okay. Well, you want me to cry for you or something? Okay. <laughs> that's it. Then I called my girlfriend in person on and told me, hey, I just got released from TNA. And he said, that's kind of funny because Rita Von just asked about you. How about you do something for 9-11? And that's why I did a show for 9-11 uh-huh. in the Homicide Ballroom on Mass Center. I did a run- last week, Roger Strong beat um, Tyler Black. He's Ted Rollins. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was leaving to WWE, and I came back. And you get the world title Ron- program with Yes, with Roger Strong. Strong. Yeah. Oh, that had to... And that had to, I mean, that had to just feel so much better. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Like, I was more hurt. Not that I got released. Of course, I got a lot of friends out there. I just felt, but that's the way wrestling is. They lie to you. Right. Nobody's real. Right. Nobody's going to tell you, like, Homicide, you really fucked up in that match. That that cage match, you should practice it. I'd rather hear that. Then, yeah. Then, oh, yeah, it was okay. No, I hate that. Like, it wasn't okay. No, it was okay, bro. Right, like, right. Like the I know day, that. I'm, yeah. I've been, yeah. Yeah, like, so, yeah, I waited, waited, waited. That's when I got the call. I said, you got release. No, say fire. Don't release <laughs> fire, bro. Like, oh, bro. <laughs> well, it's Terry Teller, like, he's a great man. Yeah. You know? So, but he told me that, like, I don't know, for some reason, I was very calm. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't mad. I wasn't depressed. I wasn't sad. I bought a little apartment in Tampa. My dad passed away, so I moved to New York. 
Then my brother needed help, so I saved some money. I bought him a house, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. That's what Terry called me. Hey, you got released. Asked him, okay. Then I got, I got lucky. I called my friend. Hey, bring the money. Ask it. You could come. Okay, I'm a free agent. And boom, I was in, in the show 9-11, did a program with Roger Strong. And it was kind of cool when Steph Rollins was leaving. I was coming in, mm-hmm. and, but not only that I was coming in, it was like one of the old school, the originals coming yeah. in, you know, it was kind of cool, you know, like, I think I thought that's my moment right there, okay, you leave it, and it was kind of cool, like, in the curtain, he came up to me like, hey, Homicide, welcome back, man, tear it up again, that was kind of cool, I don't know if you remember that, but when he told me that, that was so cool, because yeah. to me, my mind was like, all right, let's go, yeah. you know, my music hit, boom. That's also. awesome. And that probably like boosted your confidence through oh, the yeah. roof too. Big time. Like Big you're like, time. oh yeah, I forgot. Like I'm that guy. Yes. You know what I mean? Big time. I had that good confidence level for two years. Then yeah. after that, that went down. <laughs> <laughs> then when I got the surgery, that definitely went down. I thought it was I even cried like a little baby, like, oh no, I'm getting surgery, my shoulder, I'm done, I'm done, you know. Because I need my closure. That's one thing I keep stressing about. I need my closure. Uh-huh. And um, had surgery and not get no closure. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I came back, you know, and I switched right now at this moment. I'm tearing up, man. I'm I'm grinding. That's yeah. what I'm doing, you know. I'm not. It's not about the money, even though I gotta pay the bills and all that stuff. You know, nobody wants to be. Everybody wants to be rich. You know, yeah. nobody's not gonna say like, you know, forget about the money. Yeah, no, it's different ways to say. It, you know. Yeah. But um, no, I'm grinding, man. I'm hustling. I'm doing everything. Like nobody does to know that I work for MLW, NWA, Ring of Honor, appearance for Ollie Wrestling. Yeah. Anybody's doing that? I'm a free agent. I'm the hottest free agent in wrestling. You work. The- it's but, crazy. I mean, it is nuts when I look at like your schedule and like every weekend yeah. just go and go and go and it's matches. Yeah. You know? It's an it's it's amazing. And I'm sure, you know, you didn't think that you were gonna fill up your dance card again. Absolutely, you know, and sometimes I feel like, oh, people forgot. You know, mm-hmm. nobody's mentioned it. And especially these um internet guys, you mm-hmm. know, to put I don't see stuff like that no more. Like I think that's bad, but meant to. You know, you see something that's very negative, mm-hmm. like people go crazy, you know. Then you say something like, oh, you're a keyboard warrior. I'm going to get you and blah. Nah, I don't, whatever, you know. Yeah. My thing is you keep talking about me. So why my, my <laughs> your head is in my, nah, you keep talking about me. Why, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I love it, though. I can't complain. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was looking, I was watching a clip from the last time we did an interview seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Seven years ago, it was, wow. it was the you. The Big Clan. Yeah. It's you, Joe, MVP, and Loki. Okay, yes. That was, and that was where you first, you guys, I don't remember if it was P or who said it first. Mm. This is the first time you were like, this is the Wu Tang of wrestling. Yes. And it, that, and it stuck. It really is. And it stuck. Look, look at my tattoo. I see it. We really are. I see it. The, 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 Man, we are the Wu-Tang wrestling. Man. Yeah. Come on, nobody just compete with Chase not to compete with us. Yeah. We're going to show you, like... But so, my, my favorite part of that, and one of my... And it's always stuck with me for all the years, is, like, I can't even remember how it came up, but, like, talking about, like, how good wrestling has been to you. Yeah. And you were like, you understand? Mm. I was in Australia hanging out with kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? You got to think about that. Kangaroos yeah. be like, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't born <laughs> with anybody thinking I'd be hanging out with kangaroos. Yeah. And look at me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds funny, but you got to think about that. Like, what, wild. this guy, kangaroos, really? Yeah. And I, I went four times. To- after that, after that interview, I went four times. Man, and now, kangaroos every time, right? The only kangaroos, I went skydiving. You've been skydiving? Skydiving, Holmes. Wow. Skydiving. Anybody you grew up with, would they believe? Nope. They, it's not an experience. No. We say, now you're skydiving. We say something negative like, oh, I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've been through jail. I did skydive. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. You know? yeah. They have to tell me, oh, you're crazy. No, no, okay, shot is crazy. You know? <laughs> I, don't get, I got shot. No, no. <laughs> so, sky- did you like skydiving? I loved it. Oh, and not only that, the Red Bull Challenge, I drove a plane. You drove a plane? I drove a plane. Whoa. So, I shout out to my night, a promotion called New Horizon Professional Wrestling. Back, he used to wrestle with the Samoans, mm-hmm. you know? But yes, I drove, I drove, homicide, drove a plane. 
Of course, I had like you know teachers like yeah, What's but up? I mean that's what I What's feel it? like that's one of those things where it's like no matter what's happening in life, yeah, you're like, bro, I drove a plane. I drove a plane. Exactly. I mean, we... it's just like I was a guy with kangaroos. Now <laughs> yeah. I drove a, not a plane, a Red Bull Challenge plane. A Red Bull Challenge plane, bro. Then after that, I did skydiving. And I did little, what's that little gimme thing? Like, I, I was With the driving. Parachute? Yeah, the parachute driving. Yeah. Even though they, they bust my balls, like, hey, man, we're going to the river and then sharks. <laughs> we're going we to make a right, you know, <laughs> to the sand, you know, because the beach. But, man, I got a picture on Instagram when I was skydiving. And I said, I feel like super fly Jimmy Stugger, like someone doing a splash <laughs> in the world, you know, but... <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. What a yeah. life. Yeah, it's what exactly. a life. Exactly. Like I said, I wish I was a highlighter, but hey, man, hey. that this going to happen. You're going to make whatever time you got here, you're going to make it count. Yeah, man. And of course, nobody's talking about it, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, I did whatever, you know. And look at who's got a December like you coming up, too. You got the potential, like, well, who knows what it's going to be for Ring of Honor, but it's mm. it's the last final battle of this yes. era of Ring of final Honor. Battle. Final battle in December. You got NWA running pay per view in December. Yes, that's that's two pay per views right there. Yeah, next month. Next month. That's December. next month. Christmas money. Christmas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got new ornaments yeah, going exactly. on the street. Exactly, pine trees, man. <laughs> oh, to Seattle, pine trees. <laughs> yeah, like and a hard times. We, we got TV taping now. Uh, pay per view December fourth, December eleventh. Maybe the last show of the month. Final battle yeah. could be my final battle for Ring of Honor. But hey, man, I'm very positive, very confident. I hope things go well for that company because that company busted their butt for years. Yeah. You know? For years, you saw it. You know? yeah. Man, at the time, we didn't know that it was gonna be. First of all, I kind of sad that it's not gonna be a twenty year anniversary. It's not. Mm. It's gonna be stuck in nineteen. They're doing Super Card of Honor. All right. Yeah. But then it is what it is because I love to see the old school guys come to the twentieth anniversary show. You know, I love to see like maybe Simone Joe have permission. He comes. Maybe CM Punk ask permission for all mm-hmm. the rest to come to the show. Yeah, it's you know, and it makes it red SETs, all those guys, the head squad. But hey, man, no twenty, so it is what it is. Like the world's crazy, man. Yeah, it is. You never know what's gonna happen. I mean, it is. never know exactly. We could have a Jersey All Pro reunion any day. Exactly. I mean, even though we did spoke about that, mm-hmm. and I feel the, I feel that Fat Frank, God's rest his soul, rest in peace. He should be buried with that promotion. They, they should be. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's it's right. not the same. That's nah. why I felt. A lot of people say, let's do it. Like, they thing like um, Dog, my rest of school, um, Bobby Lombardi, who owns it, he passed away. Same thing, too, but just so bro. Nah, let them. Be- nah, I, I think mean, like, look, you wanted to be an ECW, but if Paul Lee wasn't doing ECW, mm. it's not ECW. It's not. You it's know, not. I mean, you could use the letters, but. Yeah. When WWE did ECW, it's not ECW. It's not ECW. It's, it's a different not. thing. It was like two corporate ECW. Right. You no, know? and I love CM Punk. He was the world champion. I take them congratulations. Yeah, you gotta but, be outlaws. But you're not. You're not ECW. You gotta be outlaws. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's still in the paper. It's still in history. Congratulations, but nah, it's not the same. <laughs> he knows that too. He knows that. Of course. He's like, yo, tell my big cow saying, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, homicide man. We'll we'll make sure that everybody gets those pay per views. There any place else that you wanna? Make sure people are aware of, or mm. social media, or anything that you want to make sure you promote. Um, I'm very bad with social network. I I kind of hate it. I'll be honest yeah. with you. Even though it's a new thing, you know. But I'm an Instagram side. I love like I'm a side. C I D E. I love fifty one fifty. I got Facebook with my real name D and also E R A Z O B. Not big on Facebook. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that's playing on kind of Twitter. You, you don't know, have Twitter. I got no Twitter. I got banned on Twitter, but that's not a story. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I got a Twitter. But I thought big, uh, man, I'm I'm a team player, man. Uh, let's promote you, man. Let, oh, let's do on. that. Come on. Let's promote you. Come on. This is a great show. I love you. Look, we got to promote Bruce Brody. Bruce Brody. Don't you love yeah. that, though? Don't you love that wrestling is big enough now where there's all these smaller companies now? Making yeah, a Bruiser Brody toy, exactly. making a Hayabusa, a Bull yeah. Nakano. That's a Jushin Thunder Liger over there. 
Those are your this. people. Those, Those are my your people. people. Yeah. My family at home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, we should promote you, man. Wow. You're doing something great for wrestling. You're doing something great for me because I'm a nobody, man. Come on. <laughs> you know? You're a legend. You know, and I really appreciate God bless you and everything for calling me that. Uh, like I said, man, some people can, <laughs> they scream at me and tell me, stop being like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you tell us, do this, be confident yeah. that. You the man, you know. Yeah. So well, you are the man. That's why I wanted you to be here. Thank you. And I'm humbled and flattered that you would uh, grace me with your presence here in this studio. It's amazing, Thank you. and uh, I appreciate you, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so That's much, awesome. man. Thank you so much, Thank and you. hopefully, you know, we see each other again. Definitely. You know. Uh, maybe get more. We need some uh, Dr. Loomis here. We need Michael. <laughs> Michael. You know, like we need that. We need, I want to get you one. You know? Merry yeah. Christmas, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, Holmes. Bra-